Knowing what antivirus software is installed on a computer is an important step for a hacker to take. Today we're going to learn about an easy way to do this on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Because new ways to exploit Windows are discovered every day, antivirus software has to constantly be updated in order to keep up. When, a, when antivirus software is looking for an update, it'll ping its home domain. And if an attacker notices that a Windows computer is constantly pinging, say, avast.com, it is likely that that computer has avast installed on it. With knowledge of what antivirus or firewall software is installed on the computer, an attacker can deploy a targeted exploit, increasing the likelihood of success. All you'll need to follow this tutorial is a wireless adapter and to be on the same network that the target computer is on. If you run into any problems with this tutorial, you can check out the article and link in the description. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do before we even start capturing Wi-Fi packets is to disable any background processes that might interfere with Airmon NG. So to do that, as root, you're going to run the command um, uh, Airmon NG check kill. And this is just Airmon NG looking for any processes that it doesn't like that it might interfere with um, Wi-Fi capturing processes and ending that. So now that's taken care of. We can actually go ahead and put our network adapter into monitor mode. So to do that, first we're going to want to see what our network adapter is actually called. So we're going to use the command ifconfig tag A to show them all. And it's going to show basically every network enabled device that is currently connected to our computer. And so this is stuff like um, Ethernet ports and network adapters. And in this case, I'm going to be using this network adapter, WLP4S0. And um, to put that into monitor mode, all you're going to have to do is sudo airmon ng start, and then the name of the network adapter, so WLP4S0. And give it a second. And now if you do ifconfig again, you can see that the network adapter is now WLP4S0 mon, mon for monitor mode. Now that um, our network adapter is in monitor mode, we're ready to start um, capturing some, um, we're ready to start sniffing for um, any networks in our area. So to do that, we're gonna use um, AeroDump NG, and it's gonna be basically looking for any SSI, SSID in our area. So this is gonna just be a quick recon stage. So you can do sudo AeroDump NG, um, and then the name of our um, Wi-Fi adapter that we're using. So it's gonna be uh, WLP4S0MOD. And this is going ahead and it's basically capturing every, um, within its range, all the different networks that it can see. And so the three pieces of information that were interested in this, so once you've identified exactly which um, network you're going to be targeting, you're going to make sure to take note of the BSSID, the ESSID, and which channel that it's um, using to transmit information. So I'll recommend because um, the BSSID is a bunch of, uh, it's a long series of letters and numbers, I'll make sure you go ahead and write that down because we're going to be using that information a lot in the next couple commands. And so after you got all the information you need from this, we can go ahead and close this with control C and we can actually start using Airmon to target the actual network that we're interested in and capturing packets from there. So to do that, this is one kind of a little bit of a long command, but bear with me. So we're going to do sudo arrow dump ng and then we're going to want to specify which channel that our um, network of interest is operating on. In this case it's 11. And then we're going to want to specify where we're going to want to write all of our capture packets to. And so I'm just going to go ahead and put that on um, in my desktop folder. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to write in home my username and then desktop. And then we're going to want to specify the prefix that all the capture files are going to use. So I'm just going to call them capture. Next, we're going to want to specify which um, the BSSID that we're interested in. And so I went ahead and wrote that down on the notepad on my other monitor. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that. Oops. I want to, so sorry, let me do that really quick again. Okay, so now I'm gonna specify the SSID and then make sure I copy that correctly. There we go. And then I'm gonna to wanna to specify the ESSID. And then I just know the time memory and make sure for the BSSID and the ESSID that you put them in quotation marks because they have to be passed as a string to this command, to arrow dump. <coughs> 
And then finally, once you've specified everything from the channel where you want to write it to, and then the actual network we're targeting, we're going to want to specify to our computer what network adapter we're going to use to capture all these packets. So it's going to be the same one we've been using before, which is WLP4S0 and mod. And, oh, and yes, I did mean tack tack, right? There we go. So now it's going ahead and capturing all the packets, but first we're going to need to capture WPA handshake. And so that only happens when a network is, or when a device connects to a network for the first time. So basically when someone comes home and their phone turns on and it connects to the network, you can capture WPA handshake. So one way to speed up that process is to send um, some DAUTH packets to the, um, to the router. And so a way to do that is if you open up a new terminal and you type in the following command. So we're going to use, um, as root, you're going to use um, air play ng this time. And then we're going to want to specify the number of packets that we're going to, the number of DF packets we're actually going to send to the router. So I'm just going to send three. And then we're going to want to specify, um, with TAC A, we're going to want to specify the BSSID that we're using. And then we're going to use TAC E and then the ESSID. And then, so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste those in really quick. So that is the BSSID and then the ESSID. And then finally, we're going to want to specify again which um, network adapter we're using to actually send those DF packets. So it's going to be WLP4S01. And it's going to ask for your password. And then as you can see, it sent three um, DF packets to this BSSID. And there you go, as you can see, AeroDump was already able to capture a WPA handshake. So this happened because once we sent those DF packets, the router basically kicked every device off of its network and those devices immediately tried to reconnect, easily allowing us to capture a WPA handshake. And so um, I would try to let AeroDump run for a little bit, just so you can capture as many packets as you can and hopefully we'll cap a pack, capture a packet that is of interest to us. So I'll be back in a couple minutes, but you might want to wait closer to hours if possible, just to increase the likelihood that this attack succeeds. Okay, so after waiting a couple minutes, um, I went ahead and stopped AeroDump NG, and then um, I went ahead and decrypted the capture packet already, but this is gonna be the command you're gonna have to use. So it's gonna be, uh, oh, you're gonna wanna make sure you run it as sudo as well. So it's gonna be sudo um, air decap NG, and then tack B, which is gonna specify the BSSID. Obviously this isn't the real BSSID that I'm using. And then um, tack E, and the name of the name of the actual network that we're using and then um, tack p and you're going to specify the actual password of the um, wi-fi network so this this way you can actually decrypt the, all the packets that you captured and then um, the name of the um, capture uh, file and so i already went ahead and did that because i didn't want to put my uh, wi-fi password on this youtube video and so now once we're in the um, folder which has all our information um, we can list all the files and as you can see you have this capture 01.d cap file so we can go ahead and open up Wireshark and we can open uh, in our desktop we can go ahead and open this dcap file and now if we um, specify if we look for all the HTTP um, requests that I was able to capture and so if we specify um, HTTP, we can see all the HTTP um, packets that Wireshark was able to capture. And if we look closely, we can see that there was something sent to Avast. And this um, likely was something sent when Avast was querying its home base, trying to look for updates or something like that. So it's likely that any Windows computer on this local network is using Avast. And this can be very useful information once we're trying to um, target this computer for a specific payload that we know Avast is susceptible to. And so there you go. And that's just um, the tip of the iceberg with this. Um, once, you're able, once you're on someone's network and you know the Wi-Fi password and you're able to capture the packets, you're able to gain so much information and increase the surface area of an attack. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP, ZAP, 
WordPress Hacking and Hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Prep Course. Check out the link in the description below. As we just saw, with some basic Linux commands and a little bit of patience, we can easily find what antivirus software is installed on a Windows computer. Now, it's important to remember to only use this on networks and computers that you have permission to use. And again, if you run into any problems, you can check out the article and link in the description. And if you have any ideas for a future video, you can check me out on Twitter at Nick Godshall. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.